Now one of the six principles of Iman that we must believe in the day of judgment. Now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had promised that will take place in the day of judgment. And it's part of my aqeedah, part of my creed that I believe in this world and the afterlife. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran al-Kareem هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that created death and life to test you to see the best of doers. So my existence on the face of this earth is for a purpose. My existence in this world is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran Kareem, He put me in this world to trial me, to test me. So I am here to be tested. Not only to enjoy my time and have fun. Even though the, the Sharia or Islam does not stop you or deprive you from enjoying your time and having fun. But before I enjoy my time and before I have fun, I am here in this world because I am being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal also says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people think they'll be left alone? Do you think that you'll be left alone to say that you are from amongst the believers? Ya Allah, I am a mu'min. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you before I test you. So why do you exist? What's the primary purpose of your existence on the face of this earth? You exist because you exist for the sake of being tested as Allah Azza wa Jal furthermore says in another verse in the Quran Kareem وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The only reason I created the jinn and mankind because I want them to surrender to me and to worship me. And I know my brothers and my sisters, it is so common for me as a Muslim to know that I am in this world because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test me. And my primary purpose of my existence on the face of this earth because Allah azza wa jal commands and demands His worship. But how many of us really apply this in their life? How many of us today in the morning when they wake up They wake up saying, you know what? This is another day, another test, another trial. Did you wake up with that thought in your mind today? That you wake up today and today is another day for you to be tested and trialed? Well, that's why we exist. Not only for the sake of having fun in this world and enjoying the beauty that Allah Azza wa Jalla created in this world. But before all that, I am here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing me and Allah commands and demands His worship. And that's why the results of your exam, the results of your test, they come out after this world, in the hereafter. In the afterlife that we started speaking about yesterday, what happens after your death? But then there's another world after your death. As the scholars say, there are four different worlds. There are four different worlds that we move in from one world to another. A world before this world that the scholars refer to it as Alam al Arwah, the world of souls. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wiped the back of Adam and all the offsprings and the progeny of Adam appeared in front of him. We were all there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked that question, Alas to be rabbikum, aren't I your Lord? So we all responded back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Yes, O oh Allah, you are our Lord. But then Allah Azza wa Jal moved us into this world where He created our bodies for us, our intellect, our brain, our memory. Then after this world, we enter a third world called Alam al-Barzakh, the world of barrier. And that's where you die. And that's the world that you live in your grave. But then comes after the, the final world. The final world. 
عالم الآخرة the he after the world of the he after where it begins with the blowing of the trumpet it begins with the blowing of the trumpet that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that how can I relax how can I live in comfort how can I rest at ease knowing that the angel of the trumpet had held the trumpet staring at the throne of Allah waiting for Allah Azza wa Jal to command him and give him the order to blow in the trumpet in which he does blow in the trumpet and the first blowing of the trumpet is called the blowing of destruction so you've got an angel called angel Israfil and this angel has a task he has an appointed task that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had appointed him to do and that is to blow in the trumpet so there is an angel called Angel Israfil and there is a trumpet so big, so humongous that you can't even conceive, you can't even imagine. That some of the scholars say, and it is a saying of the scholars, not the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the circle of the trumpet, bigger than this world, bigger than this earth. And now you've got the angel the angel of trumpet, angel Israfil, he's holding the trumpet and he's standing in a position, in a place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better. Staring at the throne of Allah azza wa jal, waiting for that moment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command an order, this angel, angel Israfil, blow in the trumpet and angel Israfil will blow in the trumpet and that very first moment that he blows into the trumpet the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy this world and that's why it's called nafkhatu saq the blowing of destruction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy this world and those who are living on the face of this world. But you know what? Because you are from amongst those that say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you an advantage. See how heavy. See how heavy the word La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah is. What's your advantage because you have La ilaha illallah in your heart and you are from amongst those who utter with La ilaha illallah? The advantage is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow the angel of the trumpet Israfil to blow in the trumpet as long as there is someone who says La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah on the face of this earth. He's not allowed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the souls of those who believe in him, those who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, before the angel Israfil blows in the trumpet. Before angel Israfil blows in the trumpet. So, on the disbelievers, on the non believers living on the face of this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the day of judgment to emerge and the day of judgment to take place. And it all starts with that blowing of that trumpet the first time. Nafkhatu saq Wa nufikha fi sur Fa saiqa man fi samawati Wa man fi al-ardi Illa man shaa Allah As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly in the Quran al-Kareem When the trumpet is blown in it And whoever lives on the face of this earth and whoever lives in the heavens shall die, shall be destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy everyone and Allah will take everyone away. No matter how rich you are, powerful you are, strong you are, influential you are, prestigious you are, your time will come. But again, because of la ilaha illallah, because of La ilaha illallah in your heart, because La ilaha illallah in your mind, 
because la ilaha illallah on your tongue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not make you experience that terrifying and petrifying moment subhanallah see how valuable and great la ilaha illallah is see how valuable and heavy la ilaha illallah is la ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah, we live by it. And la ilaha illallah, we want to die on it. And la ilaha illallah, we want to be resurrected with it. La ilaha illallah. So now, right now, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it, 1,400 years ago, the angel of the trumpet, angel Israfil, he is standing there with the trumpet in his mouth, carrying the trumpet and waiting for Allah Azza wa Jal to say to him, blow in the trumpet. That the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he himself, he says, how can I relax? How can I live in ease? Knowing that the angel of trumpet had held and grabbed on the trumpet and he's got it in his mouth waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to command him to blow in it. If that's Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is the one that's guaranteed the jannah and guaranteed no punishment, if he can't even relax, then how could you even relax? If he can't even live in comfort and ease, then what courage do we have that we live in comfort and ease neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands in our life? My brothers and my sisters, I'm not here to petrify you. I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to remind you and remind myself before you. That we've deceived ourselves. We ourselves deceived ourselves. And we think that we live in this world forever. As if we're never going to encounter or experience that moment that Allah Azza wa will take us away from this world. So now the angel of the trumpet, angel Israfil will blow in the trumpet. And that moment that he blows in the trumpet the first time, it's called Nafqatul Sa'iq. The blowing of the trumpet. The blowing of destruction. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy whatever is on the face of this earth and whatever is in the heavens and no one and nothing can stop Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. And no one can stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree. That Allah azza wa jal mentions some scenes for us in the Quran al-Kareem. How the earth will shake. How the heavens will crack. How the oceans and the seas will explode. And people will be running away from one another like wild beasts. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, people will think they are drunken, but they're not drunken. But the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so severe. The punishment of Allah azza wa jal is so severe. What are you going to do, my brother and my sister in Islam? What have you prepared for that moment? And everyone shall die. Imagine that moment. Imagine what you can't even imagine. Think of the unthinkable. Everyone shall die and everyone will be dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the death of every single living thing, every single creation of Allah. That includes human beings, that includes jinn, that even includes the angels and the beings that we know of and the beings that we don't even know of. Animals, whatever is out there that we know of and we don't even know of. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the souls of every single creation. Every single creation they had created. Even the close servants. Even the close servants to Allah azza wa will be dead. The prophets and the messengers already died. 
And even the close angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take their souls away. That it's been narrated, and some of the scholars say it's a weak hadith. That during that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands of the blowing of destruction, and there's another hadith that the duration between the first blowing of the trumpet and the second blowing of the trumpet, which is called the blowing of resurrection, the hadith says there's a duration of 40. Whether it's 40 minutes, 40 hours, 40 days, 40 years, 40 thousands of years, Allah Azza wa Jalla knows better. But then what happens in between the two blowings of the trumpet, between the first blowing of the trumpet, the blowing of destruction, while everyone is dead, and the blowing of resurrection where Allah Azza wa Jalla resurrects everyone back alive. There is a weak narration that says, during that time and during that moment, every single living thing and every single human being, jinn, animal and angel will be dead. Except illa man sha Allah. Except those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees not to die. So the scholar said, those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees not to die are angel Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael, the eight angels that carry the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal and the angel of death. So they will be the only ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take their soul. So the angel of death will come to Allah and he'll speak to Allah and say, Ya Allah, all your creation, all your creation is dead. All your creation is dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, and who stayed alive? And Allah knows better. So the angel of death will say, Ya Allah, it is only angel Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael, the eight angels that carry your throne, and you and I, Ya Rabbil Alameen, are alive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command for the death of Jibreel, Israfil, Mikael. So the angel of death will say, Ya Rabb, all your creation is dead. So Allah Azza wa say to him, and he stayed alive. So the angel of death will say, Ya Allah, it is only the eight angels that carry your throne. You and I, you and I, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command for the destruction and the death of the eight angels that carry his throne. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ Eight angels carry the great throne of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will take their souls. Allah Azza wa Jal will grant them death. Why? Because Allah doesn't need anyone and Allah doesn't need anything and Allah does not need His throne. Allah does not need the angels that carry His throne and Allah does not need any of His creation. But all His creation need Allah the Creator. So Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will take the soul of the angel of death for no living thing to exist except Allah, the one that lives and never ever dies. And I want you to imagine that moment. Imagine that moment that now all the creation of Allah and every single creation of Allah is dead. And not even one human being, not even one animal, one jinn, one angel, one being is alive. Except Allah, their creator. So what happens then, my brothers and my sisters? The most amazing thing happens. The most amazing thing happens. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after Allah azza wa jal granted every single creation of his death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start asking questions. By Ya Rabb, O oh Allah, to whom are you addressing? To whom are you asking? So Allah azza wa jal will say, Aina al jabbarun Aina al mutakabbirun where are those with pride? Where are those with glory? Where are the pride ones? And where are the tyrant ones? لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ To whom is the kingdom today? So the first time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, now response comes back to Allah. 
And who's there to respond back to Allah? Everyone is dead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the second time. Ain al jabbarun? Where are those with pride? Ain al mutakabbirun? Where are those with glory? Liman al mulk al yawm? To whom is the kingdom today? Who is the Lord? And who is the only Lord? And who is the true Lord? But here Allah, no one is there. No one is alive to respond back to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the third time. And Allah azza wa jal will say, Ain al jabbarun? Ain al mutakabbirun? Where are those with pride? Where are those with glory? Liman al mulk al yawm? To whom is the kingdom today? Who is the Lord? Who is the only Lord? Who is the true Lord? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer himself because there's no one to answer him. So Allah azza wa jal will respond to himself and he'll say, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahhar The true Lord and only Lord and no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the irresistible, the most powerful one. Allahu Akbar. What a moment. What a moment, my brothers and my sisters. You are not there because you are dead. And no one is there because they are dead. No king, no queen, no powerful, no rich, no strong, no prestigious, no famous. No one is there except Allah, the one that lives and never ever dies. لمن الملك اليوم؟ To him is the kingdom today. لله الواحد القهار. To Allah Azza wa Jal, the only one, the irresistible. To him is the kingdom today. To Allah, and only Allah, and no one but Allah. So my brothers and my sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect angel Israfil, the angel of trumpet to come back alive. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command him to blow in the trumpet the second time. So he'll blow in the trumpet the second time in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it as Nafkhatul Ba'thi, the blowing of resurrection. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect every single living thing that ever existed on the face of this earth or in this universe. So everyone will start coming back alive. All the angels will come back alive. All the jinn will come back alive. All mankind and human beings from the time of Adam to the day of judgment will come back, come back alive, including you and I. Including you and I. We will all be resurrected to come back alive in a different world than this world. A land that's different to this land. And a heaven that's different to this heaven. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran al-Kareem, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced this world with a different world. A land different than this land. And a heaven different than the heaven that we currently live under. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect every single one of us. So imagine, not him, not her. Don't feel sorry for them. Imagine yourself. It's going to be you that's going to die and it's going to be you that's going to be resurrected then and there. And how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrect you? Allah azza wa jal will resurrect you naked, barefooted, uncircumcised, the way your mother gave birth to you. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned this hadith, Aisha, out of her modesty, Aisha out of her innocence, she says, oh, messenger of Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects us, naked, 
Wouldn't people look at each other? So the Prophet ﷺ said to Aisha, oh Aisha, would people be concerned over looking over one another? They have a lot more greater issues than watching each other. They have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer to. They have Allah Azza wa Jal to stand before. They have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge them. That's what everyone will be concerned over. Who's going to be concerned looking at him and looking at her? And you know what, my brothers and my sisters? People will be resurrected in groups. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assemble people in groups. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect people in different groups. So you're not going to be in the group that you choose later on. You'll be in the group that you choose in this world. You make your choice in this world, not then. So you're not going to be resurrected then and you're going to say, you know what? I want to be amongst the pious people. I want to be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's no longer your choice then. It's your choice now. The choice that you make right now is the choice that you're going to get later on. And that's why you are so fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the advantage for you to choose what you want to choose right now. But after you die, it's no longer your choice. It's the choice that you made before your death. The choice that you made before your death. So you better make the right choice right now before, because if you don't, then you'll be paying the price then and there. So people will be resurrected and assembled in different groups where people will stand before Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will divide them into different groups. And here you are, you've got the two different parties, the two different groups, the group of the believers and the group of the non-believers, the group of the righteous and the group of the unrighteous, the group that worshipped Allah and the group that did not worship Allah. So you need to ask yourself, which group are you going to be resurrected with? May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from amongst those that he resurrects with the righteous, pious, devoted, and those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people will be resurrected in different groups to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the group that we're in. But then, what you need to keep in mind that everyone is on his own. Everyone is on his own. You are on your own. I am on my own. My children are on their own. My wife is on her own. My parents are on their own. Everyone is on his own. So don't think your friend in this dunya or your mother or your father or your son or your daughter or your brother or your sister will help you then because it's all about nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. It's all about me. I want to save myself. It's all about me. I want to make sure that I save myself from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal in the hellfire. That's what everyone's concerned about. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentions this in the Quran Kareem. Yawma yafirru al-mar'u min akhih wa ummihi wa abih wa sahibatihi wa banih likul imri'im minhum yawma idhin sha'nun yughni The day that you run away from your own brother, from your own sister, you'll be running away from your own mother, from your own father, you'll be running away from your own wife, from your own husband, and you'll be running away from your own son and daughter. Everyone just concerned over themselves. You get up to your own mother, mom, help me. So she'll say, no, I need someone to help me. Father, help me. No, I need someone to help me. Son, daughter, help me. No, I need someone to help me. I am concerned over myself. And you know what, my brothers and my sisters, not only your mother, not only your father, not only your brother, sister, son or daughter will be concerned over themselves. Even the prophets and messengers will be concerned over themselves. People will flock to Adam alayhi salam. Oh Adam, oh Adam, you are the prophet of Allah. Look at this petrifying moment. Look at this scary moment. 
Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon us. Ask Allah azza wa jal to make it easy upon us. So what would Adam say? Adam alayhi salam, the prophet and the messenger of Allah, the first creation of Allah azza wa jal that Allah had created from mankind. He'll say to them, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself, go to someone else, go to Nuh. Leave me on my own. Leave me alone, go somewhere else. Go to someone else. I'm concerned over myself the way you are concerned over yourself. And this is a prophet and a messenger of Allah. So then people will flock to Nuh alayhi salam. People will run to Nuh. Oh Nuh, you are the messenger of Allah. You are the prophet of Allah. Look at this petrifying moment. Look at this scary moment. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it easy upon us. Ask Allah to pardon us. So Nuh will reply to them the way Adam replied to them. Nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. Go to someone else. Go to Ibrahim. So they'll go to Ibrahim. And they'll say the same thing they said to Nuh and Adam. And Ibrahim will say to them the same as Nuh and Adam. Nafsi, nafsi. Go to Musa. So the flock to Musa and same thing. Nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself. So the flock and resort to Isa alayhi salam. Oh Isa. Oh Isa. Oh Isa. Look at this petrifying moment. Look at this scary moment. Ask Allah to make it easy upon us. Ask Allah to pardon us. So Isa again says to them, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself, go to someone else. I'll tell you who to go to. Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So people will resort and flock to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Muhammad, you are the prophet of Allah. You are the messenger of Allah. Look at this petrifying moment. Look at this scary moment. We can't even bear it. We can't even handle it. It's too harsh for us. It's too rough for us. It's too petrifying. It's too scary for us. It's too terrifying. Ask Allah to make it easy upon us. Ask Allah to pardon us. Ask Allah to forgive us. Ask Allah to have mercy upon us. So what would the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say to them? Would he say, nafsi, nafsi, myself, myself, no but Allah, but Muhammad, your Prophet, your Messenger, the one that Allah chose you for him and chose him for you, he'll reply to them and he'll say to them, ana laha, ana laha, I am the one that's made for this moment and for this day. I'll ask Allah. I shall ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will go under the throne of Allah and prostrate under the throne of Allah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I'll supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with supplications that I've never ever supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with before. Allah azza wa jah will inspire the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to supplicate with those special supplications during that special time. And while the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is prostrating under the throne of Allah, supplicating to Allah, seeking Allah azza wa jal's forgiveness and mercy upon his ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe and the Lord of the day of judgment, he will call upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from above his throne. And Allah azza wa jal will say to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, put your head up. Ask, you'll be given. Intercede, we'll accept your intercession. So what would the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ask for? Would the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa stand up and put his head up and say, Ya Rabb, forgive me, have mercy upon me. Ya Allah, make it easy upon me. No, 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 my brothers and my sisters, but the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he'll stand up and put his head to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, put his head up and say, Ya Rabb, Ummati, Ummati, O oh Allah, my nation, my nation. So sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he'll put, it, he'll put his head up, he'll stand up from his prostration, and he'll say, Ya Rabb, 
Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation, have mercy upon them, forgive them, my brother and my sisters. My brothers and my sisters, who are the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's you. It's me. We are the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Muhammad, put your head up. Ask, you'll be given. Intercede, will accept your intercession. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam will put his head up. And then he'll stand up from his prostration. He'll say, Ya Rab, my nation, my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, we will take out of the hellfire anyone from your nation that had iman equal to a seed of wheat. Because of you will do that. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will ask Allah for more. So he'll prostrate to Allah azza wa the second time. And he'll supplicate to Allah Azza wa Jal with supplications they had never supplicated to Allah Azza wa Jal with before. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Imam Muhammad, put your head up, ask you'll be given, intercede, will accept your intercession. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will stand up from his prostration. And then again he'll say, Ya Rabb, my nation, my nation, I want you to forgive more of my nation, have mercy more upon my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second time will say to Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, because of you and for you, we will take out of the hellfire from your nation anyone who had iman equal to the weight of an atom. Equal to the weight of an atom. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will seek for more. He'll ask for more. So he prostrates to Allah the third time. And he supplicates to Allah Azza wa Jal with a supplication that he had never supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with before. So Allah Azza wa Jal will call upon him from above his throne. Oh Muhammad, put your head up. Ask you'll be given. Intercede, we will accept your intercession. So the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam will stand up from his prostration. And again, and the third time, he'll continue to ask Allah Azza wa Jal for more pardon, for more mercy, for more forgiveness upon his nation, for you, for me, for us, for our children. Ya Rabb, oh Allah, my nation, my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, because of you, we will take out of the hellfire anyone that had ever said, La ilaha illallah. We will take out of the hellfire anyone who had ever said, La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Your wealth is not going to help you. Your strength in this world is not going to help you. Your fame, your prestige is not going to help you. What's really going to help you is La ilaha illallah and following the path of Muhammad Rasulullah. That's what's going to help you. That's what's really going to help you. That's what's really going to help me. That's what's really going to help us. How far are we from La ilaha illallah? How close are we to the path of Muhammad Rasulullah? Some of us are so far away from it. We think that that moment is never going to emerge. We think that moment will never ever come. When the reality is, this is, is the utmost reality of all realities. It is the utmost reality of all realities. It is the truth of all truth. Something that no one can escape from. Where are you going to escape to and where are you going to run to? My brother and my sister. There's a lot that we can speak about and talk about the day of judgment. What happens after the second blowing of the trumpet and the first blowing of the trumpet. However, what you need to be concerned over is why have you prepared for that moment? And before that moment is the minor day of the day of judgment which is the day that you die. Man mata faqad qamat qiyamatuh. Whoever dies, then his day of judgment had begun. What have you prepared for that moment? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Anna sunniyam 
People are asleep, long asleep. But when they die, they wake up. But unfortunately, when they wake up after their death, it's too late for them. It's too late. That moment that you stand before Allah Azza wa Jal and you are resurrected and you shall be asked and questioned as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says in the hadith every single one of you shall stand before Allah Azza wa Jal and no one in between them and Allah will ask you Allah will question you Allah will judge you how scared are you when you stand in front of a judge in a normal court in this world you should be a lot more scared in standing in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, the judge of all judges in the court of Allah in the hereafter. Why have you prepared? And that's why my brothers and my sisters, it's not about saying, wow, that's a nice lecture. I was moved. No, put something into practice. I want to walk out of this conference and I want to walk out of this lecture having something in my life that I want to make a better change in my life. And if there's one thing that I want to do in my life is to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I want to make sure that I am resurrected to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and no one else. That's what I want to make sure. I want to make sure that I want to be in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those who supported the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those who lived like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those who lived for what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi lived for and died on that. That's what I want to make sure. So who are you going to be with? Who are you going to be with? Something for us to work on from now. Something for us to stress on from now. Something for us to prepare ourselves from now. Not then. Because then it's too late. And it's only one way ticket now return. No matter who you are and what you are. Because the first thing that you're going to say to Allah, when you are resurrected, then Ya Rab, bring me back into this world and I'll do exactly what you wanted me to do. But Allah Azza wa will say to you, Kalla, innaha kalimatun huwa qailu. No. Everyone will say that, but they're not going to get it. You had your opportunity and you lost it. You stuffed it up. So do something about it now. You are so fortunate that you are still breathing air and you're still standing on the face of this earth. So do something for you and for your akhirah. Do something for yourself. Do something for your hereafter. Do something to stand before Allah Azza wa Jal with. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when you die, three things follow you to your grave. Your family, your wealth, and your actions, your good deeds. Your deeds, good or bad, they'll be with you. But then after you are buried, your family and your wealth are gone and you are left with your deeds. And the only thing that you'll be resurrected with in the hereafter is your deeds. So how much of good deeds have you, have you prepared? How much of good deeds have you prepared yourself with? What do you have to present to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because everything that you do, it's all been recorded by Allah azza wa jal. So prepare yourself from now. And get yourself ready from now. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. As the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum did. And as our righteous predecessors did. And that's something that we need to follow. That's something that we need to follow their tracks, their footsteps, that we want to leave behind a good legacy and take with us good deeds to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah azza wa jal make us from amongst them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah azza wa jal make us from amongst those who are gathered with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who only do good in this dunya to carry with them in the hereafter. May Allah azza wa jal make us from amongst those that I had, to, I had deprived and prevented your flesh from the hellfire. May Allah make us from amongst those who enter the jannah. May Allah make us from amongst those who enter the Jannah. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from amongst those who enter the Jannah. No questions asked. No judgment straight into the Jannah with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to be in the Jannah and I want to be with you in the Jannah in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.